We move to our next uh, panelist, which is Benjamin. So Benjamin, as uh, all of us passed through CERN, first as an undergraduate, so very early in his career working on CMS. Then he got his PhD working with the Atlas collaboration and came back to uh, CMS for his postdoc. The, uh, the, all these uh, challenging pandemic uh, times motivated him to go outside of uh, and change his career, find opportunities in industry, and today he comes to us as a senior data scientist at AstraZeneca, focused on analyzing data from clinical trials in oncology. So a very different field that we didn't cover. So I'll let Benjamin to tell us all about it. Yeah, hi, so uh, I'm Ben. Uh, I do not have slides, but I um, will tell you sort of a little bit of my journey. And, um, and some things that I think are sort of important in, in the transition. Um, so yeah, so the first time that I came to CERN was in 2010 as a summer student, I think similar to uh, Andrea actually. And that made me really motivated. Um, that, that was sort of an eye-opening thing for me. And so then I was like, oh, I gotta get my PhD in physics. This is very cool. Um, and then so then I, then I did that and I was at CERN for, I was at CERN for three years, but then sort of went back and forth a whole bunch. Um, at the end of my PhD, I really sort of struggled with whether I wanted to do a postdoc or go into academia, or sorry, go into industry. Um, and uh, I ended up doing a postdoc um, because I decided I had spent so much time learning to be a physicist that I might as well be a physicist for a few years. Um, and so then I, I did a postdoc for two and a half years. And then during the, and then, you know, but sort of the whole time I was thinking, okay, I do think that I ultimately want to leave. And so you know, while I was doing a postdoc, I talked to my friends who had left, um, what their experiences were, what they went through, um, and also sort of like use some of my time in my postdoc, obviously as part of still working on physics, but trying to train myself in different machine learning things, trying to like sort of broaden um, the skills that I had, knowing that they would be applicable uh, in other places as I, as I moved through my career. Um, so then the pandemic happened, as we all know, um, gave me a lot of time for reflection about really, what I really wanted to do. Um, and I sort of decided that I wanted to do something that had a much more direct impact on people. Um, the sort of in general, the, the healthcare uh, industry is, is an area that is really leaning into um, analytics and AI and machine learning in a, in a really big way, I think, particularly over the last few years. Um, and so that's one of the places that I, that I sort of focus a lot of my searching. Um, and so I was able to, to get a job and so my um, my job, so I'm currently a senior data scientist at AstraZeneca. Um, the work that I do there is sort of all over the place. Um, without getting into to too many of the details, uh, a lot of what I do doesn't sound so different than a lot of physics things in a very general sense. Um, so people in clinical trials, uh, sometimes bad things happen to them because having cancer is very difficult and there's a lot of things that can go, um, adverse events that can happen through treatment. And so there are these rare events that happen in this otherwise sort of background of other things that go on. And so it's very, there's a lot of, it's a high multidimensional space. And you try to find these rare events, predict how they're gonna happen. And then instead of just saying, ah, cool, I fit some background and now I found that double Higgs production. Now you say, ah, okay, I can make a prediction um, that you know these sorts of, this patient might be at risk for this and that they might be trending towards something bad. And then you can intervene in their care or not me personally, I'm not a doctor, or I'm not an oncologist. Um, but then you can, you know, alter um, their treatment and alter their care and ultimately improve outcomes in patients' lives. And so um, for me, that, that's incredibly motivating and something that I think is the most rewarding part of my job and makes me happy that I, um, with where I ended up. Um, in terms of advice for, for making your own transition, um, I think the thing that helped me the most was, was talking to my friends who have done the same, right? Because I, and we'll get to this more and Cecile has some great stuff for, for the CV and resume. Um, bit, but you know, I had a very technical uh, CV and my friends were like, no, 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 you gotta think about how you word these things, do this, and, and that helped a lot. Um, talking to them about sort of interview things. I mean, also there's lots of great resources, resources on the internet. Um, the other things I would say is like, put code on GitHub. Uh, a, it helps people when they're interviewing you, and B, for me at least, it helped me realize what sorts of things weren't good about my code and then to work on fixing them, right? It's like seeing them in a mirror and you say, ah, Okay, these are things I can improve on. Um, 
when you're actually looking for jobs, one of my friends gave me this piece of advice and I thought it was, it was actually very helpful. It was that, because when you look at uh, job postings, I think it can be overwhelming to see all these qualifications. And you're like, I don't have half of these. Um, and obviously within reason, but one of my friends was like, well, that's kind of a wish list, you know? Um, hiring managers won't, aren't looking for necessarily all of those things in each person. So know that you are more qualified than maybe you fear that you are. And it's okay if you don't meet all those criteria because that's not, that's not a requirement. Um, one minute. Okay. Uh, then, okay. Two other things I'll say is that um, when you're looking for jobs, it's okay to fail. This was not the first job that I applied for. Um, I definitely was rejected a few times and that's okay. Right. Um, transitioning from academia industry is not something, it's not like insanely difficult. I would argue that getting a PhD is way harder, um, but uh, know that it's okay to fail. And, and the second thing is, and this is sort of um, to, to echo something that was said already, um, Data science can vary a lot in the positions. Um, I really enjoy my job. I have some friends whose jobs in data science I think are interesting. I have some friends whose jobs in data science I do not think are interesting. Um, and so I think it's really important to, to really, to when you're interviewing, um, ask questions that uh, are sort of probing, like what are the sorts of things that I'm going to do? What's the structure of things? And I think that sort of thinking didn't really occur to me when I was like looking for PhDs and also looking for postdocs. Um, but switching data science is a, is, is a big change. And so if you have questions about what a particular job is like or what a particular workplace or, or thing would be like, it's important to ask, right? Because ultimately you're making that choice and, and you want to make it as informed as you are. So I would say you feel very empowered for that. Um, but yeah, that's, that's, that's my bit. Okay, thank you, Ben. Uh, very interesting. You added uh, some more things to the list uh, of things to check already mentioned by previous panelists. You enforced some of them. And I think a, a big one is just to say that data science jobs can be very different. Uh, so it's very good that you uh, go and check in the interview, in the keywords, uh, what it really means uh, before uh, getting into the job. And I really like the one that uh, it's okay to fail. Uh, yeah. You go one goes through many jobs in the professional career and sometimes it's a learning path to understand what you really want to do yourself not that you fail is that you are in the process of understanding where you better suits uh, industry or uh, yeah 